Continuing my trend of being very nosy and getting into Solantis business, I came across an interesting article about seven EVs that's currently in their design studio. And the main thing of interest in that article is the talk of the fastest Dodge ever. So let's talk about that in this video. So enough of this fluff, let's get into the stuff. The article says that there are six full electric vehicles and one plug-in hybrid. A safe bet to me is that majority of those are Jeep based. They're gonna go aggressive and go bev heavy with the Jeeps early, and then the other brands will probably play like catch up when their platforms come online in 2024. But I'm gonna go bold and throw in some interesting vehicles that could also be in there. So I'll start with Jeep first. So number one on my list should be the Jeep Wrangler Magneto, the full electric Wrangler. That fully electric Wrangler was at this year's Easter Jeep Safari, most notable thing about it was that it showed up with a manual transmission even though it was fully electric. So my money is on them trying to rush that particular Jeep to the market just like they did the 392 to get a jump on the Bronco Raptors coming out next year. So the Magneto should get a jump on whatever Ford calls their EV Bronco. Hey Ford, call it the Bronco juice. You know, for the battery power, not this juice right here. Just saying. Now number two, I'm gonna take a flyer and say this right here will be the hybrid track off. I'm gonna go bold with this one and say that they will use the trackout as their experimental replacement for the Hellcat platform. I broke it down in my Hellcat video about the Hellcat platform going inline turbocharged six cylinder engines with the electric assistance. So I say that the trackout first will get this system because it is the first Hellcat equipped vehicle that's going through like a major update. So the Challenger and Charger, they're gonna be out until like 2024 when those platforms get swapped over. The TRX is going to be out until 2024 when the Ram 5500 platform uh, gets swapped over. It'll be interesting to see when the Durango Hellcat will actually come with this drivetrain, even though the Durango Hellcat platform or, you know, just the package itself was only supposed to be a one year only type deal. But the G platform just seems like it's just going to be all brand new over the next few years, right? The 4xe, the 392, it, it's like they're just moving forward. They got all the new models coming out. So that's why I think that a track out is going to be the first vehicle that could have this brand new power plant. And the plant that is supposed to make that GME T6 engine that I believe is going to replace all the Hellcat variants, it's going to go online later this year. So it could be perfect timing to get our feet wet to see how it competes against the older Hellcat platform. Our train is experimental. Mm -hmm. I can't uh -huh. talk about it. You can't talk about it. What's it, it in? Normal. It's in a Cherokee, but uh -huh. it's got a new advanced powertrain I'm testing out. Now, let me step over the Ram. Now, number three on my list for sure will be an updated Ram 1500. No question that this is what is going to be in that studio right now. Ram has to have an answer for Ford and GM or they're going to risk being left behind in the EV truck race. So you got them to worry about. You got Rivian and you got Tesla about to come out with a Cybertruck. So for sure, there's going to be a Ram 1500 in that daggone design studio. So a full electric Ram 1500. And then for us TRX owners, we'll probably see the inline turbo six hybrid drivetrain that I talked about in the other video about the Hellcats. So number four, I'm going to go on a limb and say it's going to probably be an EV Pro Master. Now Ford announced the E-Transit with around 100 miles of EV range. And Mercedes-Benz announced last year that a full electric Sprinter van is coming to the US market. Now, I know this is a forgotten vehicle in the lineup, but hey, EV everything. I was gonna say an EV HD truck, but they'll probably just get an electric assistance since there's really no replacement of towing, and you're gonna have range anxiety with an EV HD truck. Hey, Tesla, where's your EV semi at? Just saying. The number five on the list, I'm gonna say that this is a full electric Dakota EV. Now there needs to be a mid-size truck in the lineup. I know people are gonna say the Gladiator, but I personally don't like the Gladiator because I think it's too tight in the compartment, just like the Wrangler. With Ford coming strong with the Maverick and the Ranger, there has to be a mid-size coming. I covered it in this video about the Dakota and why it could go through a name change. So that's probably what's in that design studio happening right now. There's only two left on the list, and let's get to the bread and butter of this video, Dodge. Now number six on the list, I'm gonna say is the EV Hornet. Now if you're not familiar with this, it is basically the journey replacement that is a rebadged Alfa Romeo Tonale that's supposed to be imported from Italy here to the US. Now it's supposed to use a similar 4xe drivetrain, but I'll bite and say that it'll go 100% electric 
just like the Magneto that I said earlier in the list. Last but not least, number seven, the fastest Dodge ever, the full electric Viper. Now I know, I know it should be the Challenger full electric demon or angel, or whatever name it'll get. Now I'm sure there will be a stupid fast Challenger and Charger combos, but let me get to that in a second. Let me make my point. The Model S and the Hellcare are close in weight, and we see that with the Model S Plaid, you can get down to like a 1.990 to 60, and that's where I think that the Challenger Angel or whatever should focus on. There's also the Tesla Roadster to worry about, the fastest imaginary production car ever made. And if we're throwing hopes and dreams into reality, then the Roadster, quite frankly, can't hold a candle to the Tomahawk X. Just saying, Elon. Here's what Dodge can do to one-two punch. Hellcats go after the Plaid, Viper goes out in the roadster. If Dodge takes a page out of McLaren's book, the P1 is still the quickest car that they ever made, which could be the Viper to us. Make the Viper dedicated to being the fastest track weapon, but still be the fastest accelerating car. And then the other models from McLaren, like the Senna and the 20 s they're slightly slower, but they had different advantages that the P1 doesn't have. So that could be for us, the Hellcats, the Red Eyes, and the Super Socks. They all have their strengths and weaknesses against each other. The Challenger, the Charter, the Durango, the Dakota, the TRX, the Trackhawk, maybe a Trackhawk L, should all be slower than the Viper because the Viper should be the only two seat carbon chassis, extremely light, rear engine supercar like I talked about in the other video. I'd rather see the Viper as the expensive top dog than Dodge because think of it like this. How much would it cost being the best and then how much would the other Hellcat versions cost? Car prices don't go down and higher price EVs are well into 100K range. We'll never again see a car as great as the Demon at that bargain price of 85K now. It's scary to think how much these cars are gonna cost. The Challenger Superstock is currently 82K. How much would a Challenger Halo electric car cost? 100K, 125K. The beautiful thing about the Hellcats was that it was an affordable 60K, 700 horsepower car. And now with a Superstock being 80K, the Model S Plaid costs 120K. The Tesla Roadster gonna cost 200K. The Audi e-tron GT costs 99K. The Taycan Turbo S costs 185K, just saying. So let me know what you guys think about my list. Anything surprising? What about the fastest Dodge ever? Challenger, Viper, what's gonna be the cost? Let me know down in the comments below what you think. And until the next video, I'm out.